media and digital culture as catalyst for understanding recovery, um, recovery of lost histories, repair archives, and build relationships beyond border politics. I would also add that, that repair in this context, I'm connecting it with transformative repair, um, not returning something to its original state, but actually the ways people are transforming their current um, reality into true artistic interventions, true artistic collaborations. Um, and beyond, beyond excited, um, and thank you all for, for those of you who joined us today, that you had to wait a little bit. Thank you for your patience. I um, will um, be inviting uh, Kinsey um, um, perhaps to introduce oneself. Kinsey will be our first speaker, and then we'll have a short conversation. Um, after that, um, Mustafa will join the conversation and then Mustafa will take us through his um, kind of insight into the artistic work he's doing from Hargeza, Somalia, Somaliland. Um, I always use both names in order to respect the different positions. So today is actually not a conversation that dives, dives into the political contested um, uh, uh, situations, but of course, one cannot talk about Somalia, Somali region without actually touching a bit on it. So it will it will be part of the conversation, but it will not dominate the conversation because, of course, our main focus is um, the artistic ecosystems, the set of conditions. So in that context, we will touch base. Um, the other thing that I wanted to address is that, um, of course, Matav as a museum is also a museum with an interesting collection, has been collecting North Africa artist, art, um, artworks from North Africa, from well-known artists, but also lesser known artists, and of course the Gulf and Qatar specifically. Um, but I also think it's an interesting moment to see what it means to expand the geographies beyond. And that's the work the curatorial team has been doing. So it's been my pleasure to join and to be part of this conversation and to see what type of ways we can dive into um, and trace into um, what is happening at the moment um, across some of these African countries. Um, I would like to, I will share screen um, for um, Kinsey and um, Kinsey will be speaking. I think Kinsey, you can join us now. I'll unmute you. Thank you so much, Amal. Um, thank you. I'm here. I can hear you. Unfortunately, my internet is a little bit unstable, so I'm going to have to come uh, not on video, but hopefully you can hear me. If you bear a second for me, I'm going to get, the, um, um, get your screen going, but you can start speaking, Kinsey. I will turn yeah. um, off my video and I will then share screen. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Amal, and thank you um, for inviting us, and um, thank you to Matahaf. It's um, uh, trailblazing, as always, Amal, um, doing amazing work, and uh, I look forward to following the rest of these um, conversations as well. Um, my name is Kinsey Abdullah. I'm a visual artist um, based um, in London, in the UK. Um, as you mentioned, Amal, 
Um, I founded uh, NIMBY Arts and I'm part of a team uh, behind the Somali Museum, um, which is our latest project. I'm going to um, speak uh, uh, a little bit about um, our journey um, to <clears throat> both uh, NIMBY Arts um, and this work that we have been doing um, for the past 30 years um, in different um, ways and different ecosystems um, uh, in collectives uh, and then it's the work that's kind of grown out of that out of this journey um, and the beauty of doing this work in the UK I mean having come here after a, the usual kind of uh, migratory routes um, through Middle East um, 30 years ago uh, collapse of uh, the Somali state. Um, I went through um, United Arab Emirates and Saudi and Egypt and lived in lots of different Middle Eastern countries before arriving um, in the UK as a, a young person of 18 years old and settling in the East End of London, a place of uh, a, a very multicultural and entry point to a diverse um, uh, communities uh, from um, Jews um, to Bangladeshis to um, different people from different parts of North Africa, mainly Algeria, um, a lot of uh, people from Yemeni, Huguenots. So East London has a history, obviously, of, of migratory colonial and, 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 and before colonial times as well. Um, as a port city of, uh, as the main port city of London. And, and settling there, obviously, um, you can't avoid being surrounded by um, a rich, uh, a diverse and creative history. And as someone who's always been drawn to art, even at a young age um, in Somalia, um, of course, um, pursuing a route into arts was was really the thing that I was interested in. And actually where I started um, as an artist was textiles, because there is a, a family connection um, uh, with my family. Historically, uh, women in my family are weavers, including my mother, and I've always um, come in from Somaliland and part of kind of Hode, um, where um, my, my mother is from, um, it's always been, I've always been exposed to, 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 the, to culture of weaving, of women making, um, weaving or dyeing, and I think that's something that kind of uh, uh, singing and, and poetic kind of formations and collaborative working is something that I have always been drawn to. So of course when I arrived in, in the UK, um, I pursued a degree um, in textile and and the thing that I was really most interested in was natural dyes and um, organic um, uh, uh, different ways of uh, kind of indigenous ways of making culture and, and, and a visual culture and, and I think maybe having that understanding really helped me but also doing art meant that something that really really didn't need language so that was another reason why I was drawn and, and, and actually I was lucky to enter um, one of the best art schools in this country at Farnham, um, where there was a long history of um, making and crafts um, and especially textiles and pottery. And that's actually where I was introduced to one of the, my favorite people and mentor who now passed, um, a Najumi a Sudanese, very uh, amazing Sudanese potter. And I felt that actually I was adopted <laughs> into, into this kind of a canon of history and an artistic practice uh, for, for, from the Sudan. And obviously speaking Arabic as well kind of helped. Um, but uh, where, when I think coming back from art school, coming back to East London, I've, I've realized that actually this is a place to start. So first I, I got involved in, you know, or helping organize uh, Somali festival and bringing the community together. And I think that's something that I've always been drawn to in, uh, away from fashion and design um, and the commercial um, world into um, giving back into my community and, and working with people. And I think 
working in the Somali festival was really a, an amazing place to start. And of course, shortly after, um, I decided that I wanted to make uh, work that was more kind of socially engaged. Um, so I went back to art school to do a master's in um, professional practice or something um, that um, I think making work in public places is something that I've been drawn to. And I think doing work collaboratively is the other thing that informed my practice. So um, Numbi and Kudu Arts um, was born out of that, working collectively um, with lots of other people and making work with, with lots of other people. And um, that's really where this um, ecosystem, and it's kind of started, I think, as Chenu Acheba says, you know, if that story um, that you want to tell is not being told, be the person to tell it. And I think um, that's me rephrasing it. But I, I love the idea of, of having a voice, having an agency, telling our own story um, away from the status quo and kind of uh, disrupting what I felt was um, a systemic <laughs> Um, erasure and um, I, really, I never really understood how a Somali community historically have, have had amazing links and as a settled community in this country there was very little visual um, or otherwise uh, any presence um, and every kind of now and again of course there's big festivals and um, the, the reason always has been um, there's a war going on in your country <laughs> so hence the absence and, and I really felt that it's important to have agency to have prisons to tell um, history and also collect and I think that's another reason why I, I became very interested in archiving in collecting bringing communities together and, um, and, and also of course what happens after you collect um, you have to think about where what you are collecting and we have been collecting with festivals events workshops um and lots of little collab lots of interesting collaborations um both locally and globally um uh including i think that's how i met mustafa um we organize the numbi festival every year and, and actually that's how i met amal and i think it's almost kind of like finding your tribe finding other Somali people who are creative, who are making work in, in, in contemporary, interesting, who are writing about work. Um, and I think, you know, to organizing the festival, actually the, the first festival, um, we always had this notion of um, not only thinking locally and where we are settled in London, in East London, in the UK, but also thinking globally in these cities uh, of my of migratory history um, for Somali people, where Somali people are settled, um, and connecting with artists, and I think the internet um, is always. I think I remember this is how old um, MySpace was was that kind of first offering of how you connect with other Somali people um, locally, but also globally, um, and and then organizing kind of live events um, in these different cities. So. Um, I think we had this strap line um, for, for the C C Cities Festival, which is if we get together, we can even mend a, a crack in the sky. And I, I love that notion that um, there, is, there is a connection. Um, I, I think they say in, um, in so many beautiful ways, the Somali, um, a lot of Somali art making um, that is accompanied poetically, um, whether it's songs or dance or, or, you know, all those different kind of expressions, they always have uh, an intelligent and contextual ways of explaining um, the, the work that we do and how we do it. And I, and I love the idea that these Somali proverbs and these um, um, ancient um, ways of of, of making work, whether it's um, the tabhad, which is um, a thing, a, a pestle for burning frankincense. Um, it is metaphorical uh, for um, uh, expressing um, the connection between the past, the present and the future. 
uh, in a way that I think we have all been trying to do in, in these kind of connections of bringing, our to, bringing us together beyond the borders, beyond, um, <clears throat> Uh, and and I, and I think it's important also to think about uh, one of the things that actually earlier on, one of the ways that we try to do that was um, inviting people to bring their family photographs, to bring their um, family um, videos, um, whether they're of weddings or whether they are um, of events or whether they are of things that are just their family collected and um, whether they are objects that they found in their houses um, and almost not trying to recreate um, these studio photographs but also before that we lose them to trying to preserve a, 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 and archive them for, the, for both those who own those images um, and those photographs and those physical objects but also for us um, as um, something to learn from. And the first project that we did actually was um, Whitechapel Gallery, where we put out a call um, internationally. And I think that's what I always loved about the work that we do at Numbi Art, is that the local, um, the, the, the global, um, the conversations are global, the platforms are always local. Local, I mean, locality to wherever we are, whether we are in Hargeisa or London or Atlanta, Minneapolis. Um, so people um, brought in some of the most beautiful photographs, um, the objects and things and photographs and things that they found in their family um, archives. Um, and then we would kind of make things with these images, either to kind of like construct stories that are around them. Um, we published um, Scarf magazine. Um, and that's another way of kind of like another outlet and another platform. Um, because we had a lot of writers who are part of our extended Numbi family. So the festival really allowed us to connect with um, artists, filmmakers, photographers, um, poets, people who are based um, across the globe in the diaspora in lots of different places. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think the, the making together has always stayed. And I, and I think the interest in weaving, um, for example, like Mogadishu is named after a cloth. So the Banadiri cloth, um, uh, not the, the most kind of, the, the new version that, um, that is printed or, or made in India now, but the, the indigenous cloth um, uh, of Mogadishu, um, that Banadiri cloth um, is, you know, so there's always been a history of making, of weaving, um, of dyeing, um, uh, of pottery, and some of the most amazing pottery, ancient um, potters, um, and even like um, limestone, uh, stone that people dig up to make all this kind of frankincense burners, frankincense itself. This, this both a very ancient history of, of um, Somali material culture and contemporary ways that still some of these things stay despite the war, despite um, our fragmentation and displacement and um, uh, being all over the place, all over um, the world. But Somali people have always traveled and Somali people um, have always been uh, migratory um, in, in so many kind of, and I think that, that that kind of connection is what some of these images and some of these things that we were archiving, what people were bringing in, um, were conjuring up. And I, and I think um, that is probably one of the most beautiful um, contribution. Another, um, one of the things that also came out of, of that call out, which is kind of collective research, um, was the film Numbi, um, it, um, a film is made uh, about a dance. It's a political allegory, last uh, film made in Somalia before the war, um, for a dear friend um, who's now actually based in Qatar and uh, Doha. Um, who made that film, and um, we've actually decided to to, to name the festival uh, Numbi, um, and and also co continued um, uh, ever since. And I and I love also the idea that it's a dance, is a healing dance. Um, I think dance metaphorically is a beautiful way of 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 kind of uh, the movement, and it kind of connects in a way um, cinema does. 
um, lots of different art forms. Um, so th yeah, um, that's 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 where we uh, gone from then, and and ever since we have kind of moved forward um, with Numbi um, as both the organisation and the festival, and. Um, I think one of the other beautiful things about the practice and the work that we do and how we work together it is um, kind of collapsing spaces and, and developing something out of the, and my work personally as well, in my own practice is socially engaged, um, it's dialogic, it's conversational, and it's process based. So we've never, my idea and, and, and a lot of the people that we worked with and collaborated with at NUMBI, I think you, it became important that we we kind of collapse these spaces and as a way as part of the disruption as well that, you know, to have autonomous spaces where we create, um, collectively create, collaboratively create, I think it, it's, it's something that it's it's of Somali culture. It's one of the things that I think has has stayed with me and it's steeped in my practice. Um, and what we have done is the next thing, that project that we did um, was coming here, being here. And the idea was to celebrate British Somali heritage. And I think that project kind of brought us to another place. And I think one of the recommendations, because a lot of the work that we are informed um, that we that we make and the decisions that we make and the way we make together and collaborate at NUMBI is the works also is in conversation with our participants, with our partners, with our collaborators. And what came out of that last project was it's ne how necessary it is for us um, to create a space a museum, a living museum, um, having worked with most of the museums in this country um, from Scottish National Museum. I mean, a lot of these museums collect Somali artifacts and objects and have been in communication with, with Somalis over, the, over many years. And I think what I, one of the things that I also find most inspiring is traveling to Minneapolis and being invited by House of Somal one of the most amazing um, Somali creatives I I can definitely say I've come across in the 30 years that I've been doing this work. And doing that exhibition with them and coming here, being here, um, really was also part of um, the catalyst for us to push for a Somali museum. And this is where we are now. We are securing a building, we found an amazing building that has an amazing history um, to the history of the Somalis in the UK, but also um, to where we want to go. Um, and the, the thing that we use at the moment is, um, a, you know, a map of new dreams and, and maps and map, mapping is something that I've always been fascinated with. And we are working with some of the most amazingly talented Somali creatives um, in the UK and globally, and um, yeah, so that's where I'm going to um, stop for now. <laughs> thank you, um, thank you so much, Kinsey. Um, I feel it was so rich, but I'm also thinking about how you are. Um, um, you know, one of the people that is actually the Somali arts historian um, in the diaspora, um, you know, becoming an art historian, I guess also um, in the sense that you've actually been thinking a lot about it um, through lived experience and actually researching. And I wanted to ask you a bit, if you could maybe also touch a bit more on, you know, um, this, um, this I feel it's a bit of an unknown part of Somali culture, you know, the and culture making mm -hmm. that often the cliche thing, or I mean, it is a wonderful cliche thing that the Somalis are known for is poetry. I guess the other thing we're known for is being kind of, you know, the, the um, what is the media framed um, ongoing war zone. And um, at the same time, I think one cannot detach the two, but at the, but on the other hand, um, um, it, 
overshadows the material, the very rich material culture that you also touched upon. And I wanted to ask you if you could maybe say something about that. You know, you kind of said a little bit about this, um, the craftsmanship, but perhaps you could touch a bit more on, you know, um, what it means to actually uh, repair or to actually dive deeper research and then bring up um, this, um, some of the lesser known parts of Somali culture, um, culture making, art making, um, which is also unknown to a whole generation of people who grew up not only in the West, but we'll grow up also in the country. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, um, I, I suppose I've always been frustrated by going to the library, <laughs> doing research and uh, not finding much. Um, and I never really understood. Um, it made no sense to me that there is very little on Africa in general anyway. <laughs> And then within that, there is a complete, if not complete erase, erasure, um, but also, um, yeah, there is just not. And then, and then I think it took me a while to realize that actually we are there, which is, is something else. <laughs> and whether that's intentional or, uh, I, I don't believe the things that happen by coincidence, I think it's, it's by design. <laughs> Um, sometimes because we've all have to become our own researchers and we have to dig and we have to learn how to and I think that's when I realized that um, poetry it's the most beautiful archive it it is it is it is some of the most some of the most beautiful stories um, um, that we've ever known um, have come from poetry um, I don't think it's a, it's not a cliche. I mean, I suppose it is, um, it, it now becomes a cliche because everybody's poets. But, um, and, and I think that that can, I can understand why, but I've, I've also learned um, that a lot of the art we make, the visual culture, a lot of it is poetry. And, and I think I never really understood this fully till I spoke to, uh, Abdul um, uh, who's an amazing Somali filmmaker and who, said, who describes his film as poetry. And, and he said, that my, my, my films are a visual, visual poetry. Um, and the more I speak to people, I remember many, many years ago meeting the Somali sculpture. I mean, this woman in her 50s who you know, used to work for the Somali BBC um, and, I, and I never knew she was a sculptor. I mean, she actually went to art school and she made this, and I went to her house and I was like most fascinated how I don't know about this person. And, and she said, oh, you know, it's like, I made, I made this art. It's almost like, you know, writing poetry in secret. <laughs> so it's like, you write poetry for yourself. And I think it, it's, re it's really fascinating that um, our poetry um, and I think that's why at Numbi we're across arts. And I, and I think even in my practice, I, I reject this kind of very Eurocentric view, way of you are uh, a painter, you are, um, you know, a designer, you are a photographer. Of course, those things, like, I suppose, in learning in, in schools, it makes sense. But even, even when I was in art school, I think I spent more time in pottery <laughs> with the Jumi than I did uh, in, in the textile department. And I think, and that's where I got my learning. And I, and I really think it's, it's important as to what we connect with. Poetry makes sense. Uh, a lot of Somali people are nomadic, um, even, um, you know, uh, poetry, even in the sense that dance is a kind of a poem um, for, for, for settled communities, for hunter gatherers, for fishermen, it's all song. Um, these things don't need, you can take them with you. And I think if we think about our culture in that way, the, the, these films are, 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 are all, it's all visual in, in a way that what you see, there's a lot of these films don't have dialogue. And, and I think when I did my thesis, the first time I think I wrote something about this kind of aesthetics of, you know, the Sawahil, because at the time I couldn't research Somali. <laughs> So I have to think about the Sahel 
um, the, the, the East African coast in its entirety. Um, not only you know to start there, but then it took me completely to the other side, to West Africa. And I think that kind of, you know, do your own research and actively doing it. I think I have learned that there's a lot that I can uncover in, in the museums in the UK, Somalis, if you're looking for Somali um, uh, history, you are going to go to everything, Negro, all the, you know, all the kind of the, the, the things that we already know about. To everything else, Somalis, for example, are all Yemeni. So when you're researching about Somali sailors, you are talking about Yemeni sailors. Um, and, and of course, there's the, the historically, um, Yemen being uh, an Aden where a lot of the Somalis who ended up as sailors, as seamen, came from there. Um, but also to Somali people in the Somali psyche, some Yemen, Aden is Somali <laughs> in, 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 in that way. And, histo and historical documents, ref you know, people are not, are not, they didn't have Somali document, there was no Somali passport. And I think that kind of, you have to kind of separate the nation from the people yeah. and the geography. And I think that's what I found that helped me in kind of uncovering. And then also I've learned how to kind of leak and uh, release information so it's available to everybody. And I think that is something that I've learned from our Somali culture, um, this whole thing of ownership, who owns what. Yeah. Um, and I think the way that when you make things collaboratively, and I think that is something generally in, in African culture, but Somali people, there's a lot of dignity in kind of like, um, there's this song that I've learned when I was little. I mean, I, at the time, it really didn't mean anything. But now that I'm practicing an, as an artist and making work, it really kind of makes sense that you take pride in people not knowing who made this object. And that, that kind of flies against everything you learn. So, so I think poetry in that way, um, it, it's a kind of, it, it's part and parcel um, of yeah. describing who we are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that you brought that up as poetry because I think many uh, people also who grew up in the diaspora uh, who were born elsewhere. I mean, I, maybe I should also clarify what I mean with diaspora because um, to speak within the Somali context is not to only speak of the diaspora in the West, as in the US, Canada, um, um, Europe, uh, but I'm speaking literally also the people who are in the Gulf at the moment, the people who are in Southeast Asia, the people who are in South America. So it's really a widespread um, diasporic community with different um, historiographies, um, but all somehow connected to some ancestral land within the Somali region. And um, I appreciate that you brought up the poetry, uh, Kinsey, and um, that you also kind of unpack that for us. Thank you so much. And I would like to uh, perhaps also bridge uh, to uh, Mustafa uh, Said. Um, maybe you want to join us um, if you're able to join. Let me check if, yes. Hi Mustafa. Oh, maybe I have to unmute you. Yes. Hello? Does it work? We can't hear you. Yeah, let's... Uh... You can try again in, in one second. And otherwise, we'll just continue the conversation also um, with Kinsey while you're actually uh, checking your microphone. Yeah, I'm here, Mom. 
Yeah, because I can't, I, I, um, there's no way to unmute you myself. So, or I think it's, it's maybe send so him a just, message in the chat. Yeah, I, I will write to him in the chat. But yeah. I, I just wanted to ask you, Kinsey, because there was another part that I wanted to talk to you about was perhaps something, um, how to, a big part of Somali culture, even the artistic uh, work are um, really about, um, I would say, immaterial culture. It's if ephemeral. You said you are collecting events. Mm -hmm. um, as someone who also works between, um, you know, material culture and, and immaterial culture. Um, I'm very interested in, you know, um, if you could maybe expand on that, what that approach has been, what it means for you to, you know, move from doing collaboration with, let's say, British Museum, you know, where you can actually find some remains of Somali um, material objects. But, you know, um, and then the role of poetry as if ephemeral, um, immaterial culture, immaterial material culture, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think um, I remember a few, um, few years ago, I did a residency um, at the National Museum of Scotland. And I, I was so fascinated that they had a whole reams and reams of boxes and corridors of Somali objects, but no context no information they didn't know what these things i think might have um something that the whole kind of like a box and it would just say a comb <laughs> so like okay from where you know like how like when and and i remember finding like this reams of um alendi like woven cloth um in silk, and I, and to my understanding, in all the years I've been studying um, textiles, I was always told that Somalis didn't weave silk, um, you know. And I was just like, okay, so here we've got some Somali cloth woven in Somalia, um, in silk, in this most beautiful colours, and it's so old. In fact, um, also I was also kind of sad that these things were also falling apart and you kind of think like, yeah, right, museums do actually look after these objects and that's why we can't have them back. And I had, and I think one way that I could find out, because I was there for like three months, six months doing this mm -hmm. residency. And one way I could find out was like going to poetry, like, you know, and I, and I really, that's one way that I move between um, these different worlds because you, if you want to find some of these historical contexts, you're going to find them in poetry, you're going to find them in song, you're going to find them, you know, and that's going to lead you somewhere else. And, and I really find that fascinating. And I think that's something that has informed my practice um, for many, many, many years. Um, and, and then you kind of like reevaluate some of that information. Mm, okay, well, yes, let's, let's have a look at this in a, in a different light. And I, and I, and I'm really, um, I'm lucky uh, uh, um, and I'm really happy that, that I've managed like to kind of work in that way and not kind of um, be kind of regimented. Um, and I think, I, I suppose also moving away from being a maker allowed me to do that. So I, I, I honestly believe that, you know, um, you use whatever expresses the message that you want to put across. And I think, Somali people mm -hmm. and Somali culture and Somali art and Somali visual material culture has kind of worked in that way. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, and I think that is something that is very beautiful, is very important. And I, and I think preserving some of these stories, some of these poems, um, and, I, and I also like a lot of the Somali artists that we work with, that we know, they move between, they're musicians and you know, writers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. educate you know they, they move between art forms and I think that is something that comes kind of natural yeah <laughs> um, that's super interesting mm -hmm. I, I think what you what you're also saying about this um um this matter that you know um because we haven't even touched base we haven't even talked about embodied mat um, embodied memory mm -hmm. and um and at the same time what are you know um 
what are the other like there's there's a way of knowing how to make you know uh, how to work to poetry that many Somalis grow up with as you were touching base on but then how to translate poetry that poetry into cinematography or you know into sculpt into a sculpture or into a painting mm -hmm. or into photography Mm -hmm. And um, I think maybe we can, yeah, we can invite um, Mustafa back into the conversation. Um, let's see if this time around it works. Yes, yeah. Um, oh, well, well, yes. Hey, thank you. Um, finally, so finally. <laughs> well done. Um, yeah. IT team. I've had a little bit of a rough time with the, with the mic. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm that glad. Was a, that was a good conversation. I'm glad it's working. And and speaking about poetry, uh, visual poetry, um, when I was thinking about the Somali proverb, um, Nendiga crack in the sky, I was thinking about this work. I'm moving aside from for the sea, the work by you, uh, Mustafa. It's called Peace and Honey, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And, um, and also, Kinsey was talking um, about poetry, and to me, um, these multi multiplicity, um, the multiple poetic iterations um, that is, you know, in, that is present in 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 different uh, works of you, um, could be, you know, um, something we can also talk a bit later. I was wondering if you could also just like Kinsey, uh, perhaps introduce yourself and um, say something about who you are, where you're based. I didn't mention for those who are checking in with us that all three of us are um, broadcasting to you from a different place, like Kinsey uh, is in London, um, Mustafa is in Hargeisa, and I'm in Amsterdam. Um, so I, I just give the digital floor to you, uh, Mustafa. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm muted now. Yeah, yeah. I'm Mustafa Saeed. Um, I'm based in Hargeisa, Somaliland, Somalia, in Somaliland, Somalia, uh, whatever you can understand. I'm based in Hargeisa, in Somaliland, and uh, I do. Uh, uh, I'm a visual artist and photographer. I'm a self-taught uh, graphic designer. So. Um, is my screen shared or is it just my video? Hello? I think I think maybe um Mustafa, you if can... you switch off your video, maybe we could your voice will be clearer. That's what I had to do. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, okay. Yeah, um, I'm so sorry, I'm a visual artist and screen. sorry. You can share your screen. So you can share your screen and then we give you the space again. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, am I on now? Yes, we see your screen. Thank you. Okay. Um, as, a, as, as someone who's been a self-taught and um, been passionate about art, I didn't know what art was at the beginning, but it was just like some kind of a, a beautiful thing that I used to see on magazines, on TV. Uh, I understood it as like kind of an expression where people were just sharing what they were doing as uh, artists, but I didn't know the tool and the understanding of it till I have always approached by a curator that gave the heads up and told them whatever I was doing was some kind of a, an expression that could be considered as an art. Um, art always existed around me on TV, on principal stuff, but never tangibly. So when I reiterate, reiterate to go back to when I used to live in Saudi Arabia, I moved back. I'm a born and grew up in Saudi Arabia till I was 14 years old. And then my family decided to go back and move to Hargeisa to start living there. So in the school, I had a little bit of exposure to arts classes for kids and stuff like that, but not to the way that I can tell and say it, it was in a professional way. So when I came here, internet was the first thing that I was exposed to, exposed to. 
uh, I will always try to go to the internet cafes where I try to, uh, where I save my lunch money to go and, and explore and dive into these different online forums where people were creating film posters, uh, musician artworks, album artworks, creative stuff. So it was always a way for me to see what this beautiful, nice, trendy thing that people were using. Let me dive in and let me try and do it. So with time, when I started doing this, uh, trying to explore stuff, I found out that maybe there is somehow a way that I can create something that might translate where I am. So the kind of culture around me, maybe the kind of fabric that used to exist in the house that my mom would use, where the ladies would use at the wedding, maybe around me and stuff like that. And I always was drawn to those colorful stuff while it was that I later on found out that it's something only for the females because males in Somali culture doesn't wear uh, colorful stuff. It was always uh, the white shirt with the white marries, like uh, the fabric with the uh, countries that are in, like in the Gulf countries, they say Rizal or different, similar to that word. So I always had this kind of thinking of, oh, there's that kind of visual element that maybe, I didn't know what was it translating into, but oh, let me try to do it. And with time, it turned out that I understood that it might be an aesthetic. So with the graphic design and stuff that I was trying to learn through those uh, online forms while we were creating the art world and stuff online, I started trying to create those cultural traditional elements into digital. So some of it was hand-drawn, some of it was recreational of the Alindi uh, Somali fabric that uh, originated in certain southern parts of Somalia. Maybe can do a little uh, correct me at that point. But well, these were the kind of stuff that I was trying to emulate and try to express uh, while I'm trying to have that kind of a uh, a new look into it and trying to modernize it and try to have my own touch um, and stuff like that. So these are the artworks that I've done back in 2013 when I was trying to learn and check and see if things were recreate stuff. And then uh, after that, when I started posting those, uh, those artworks to the social media is where I started seeing other artists and people outside of the continent and outside of the country around it, giving me different um, opinions, telling me, oh, this can be valued as an art because it gives a message. Even though to me, it was like the usual daily thing that I used to see and used to hear about, but still I hear people telling me, oh, this is, can be a visual uh, element and uh, itself, a, a visual uh, language. So I started uh, doing this series that I call Home and Me, which is about me moving back to Hargeis, Somaliland, where I had a, an upbringing in Saudi Arabia and the kind of stories my mom used to tell me and this kind of Somali identity that she was sharing with me uh, to understand where I come from and who I am and all these kind of different things. And her herself, because she moved, my parents met in Saudi Arabia, they moved to Saudi Arabia when they were very young, teenagers. So they had this kind of identity around them not being Saudi, but at the same time being uh, someone who understands the cultural, uh, uh, the social structure situation they were in and they're trying to upbring us in. So Home and Me was this kind of stories, uh, this kind of look that I had, uh, the cultural uh, Somali identity that I was trying to see and think of. So I, I always used to think that this, the pop culture and uh, the usual uh, globally, each country that you look at have a certain kind of a visual element to them. That whenever you see it, you'll be like, yep, that belongs to India, that belongs to Saudi, that belongs to Ethiopia, to somewhere. But when it came, when it comes to us and somehow, I used to always think that the Somali culture has always had this kind of uh, oral expression 
more than to have a contemporary uh, visual element to it. So I always had a hard time trying to define how can I create something contemporary while trying to make it look so money while trying not to make it very cliche. Maybe it's cliche might not seem to the other but to me because I always see whenever someone has been made here, it's always used with the type of fabric that I used in those works that I've done years ago and with this Omani kind of uh, the camel, uh, the incense, uh, the, um, um, the Frankenstein uh, elements like that. So through this artwork, I was trying to define or express uh, something that uh, I was trying to, um, and then I was trying to express and show what it still has this kind of monumental Somali element to it. So years after that, I tried to learn how can I express what I was trying to do and how I can tell stories um, through the place that I'm in, what these old people surround, surround me and they share with me all these different kind of stories. So when I started doing corner energies, it stemmed from the idea of me being here, but not having the platform or the space to express the kind of artwork and uh, expression that I want to do. I, I was able to meet different youth from different backgrounds to ask them what is it uh, for them as a young people in 2015, younger than 30 in Hargeisa, uh, express themselves. What do they think of them as an, think of themselves as an energy that is not being used or what kind of obstacle are they facing? So with, with this one, even though any person who might live here might look at it and, might, and can tell the location and the walls, textures, architecturally, uh, that this is Somali, at the same time, I was trying to put this kind of different um, touch to it, to, to, to make it, um, to, to, to try to put a contemporary kind of touch to, to the Somali pop culture that is still developing itself. Uh, as, as I mentioned before that the Somali society, Somalis, we always have always had the poetry as a, a meaning of expression for centuries. I tried to reach out to different uh, young people or poets who express themselves through poetry while they're trying to move on from the usual well-known ways of uh, building phrases. Uh, when you, as you know, in Arabic, they say qasiya and different kind of uh, ways while you're telling poetry. A lot of young Somali poets now trying to come up with their own ways. I won't say it's rap, rap doesn't belong to us, but in a way it's like a modern contemporary Somali poetry. Uh, I don't know if I will be able, uh, if I play this, will be feasible as a video wise. Oh, sorry. Can you hear the audio? So through this, I approached. Uh, no, I can't hear it. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Maybe we can share it on the page, uh, Mustafa, later on the Mashaf page for those who are interested. If that's if that's uh, great. Um, yeah, I'll just show the uh, visual elements of it. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. So these, this, yeah. So these different uh, short po poems that's written by Hayabash, I tried to have a different audience to some other poetry while I was trying to put something contemporary with it. So I created this kind of visual, emotion visuals that depicts it and depicts and expresses the words that we're trying to showcase and express. So as I, I, I was as I was mentioning earlier, um, different. Um, 
always the um, expression and art, art and expression has been always existed here, but it was always individualistic. It wasn't collective because there was no existing platform that exists in the country. So people have always had this kind of uh, expression of the interest. Uh, it might have an audience, it might not have an audience. Uh, with the social media and the internet connectivity spreading around the, the country for the last 10 years, we started seeing different young people trying to express themselves and showcase the work that they have through online. Uh, the city has always had a different kind of a, a topography where there is a graffiti on different shops, so people will always showcase uh, whatever element they have in the shop, so uh, the, the can milk, the milk cans, or stuff like that, uh, the, the soap, like whatever they are selling in these supermarkets or shops outside. Till the printing companies came into the scene and people started printing digital banners and digital signage in front of the shop. So the art of having this graffiti marketing ways of marketing your own products and stuff through drawings have been dying in the last decade. But with the social media, we see more creative people putting out their art and making and giving, creating this kind of a demand where people are always asking, we need your art. So different people have been expressing themselves through painting, mostly painting. Photography has been always like a for events. Event. Uh, but social media has been nowadays has seen more creative people coming out of stuff in graffiti. Uh, so these are different examples of different young people uh, creating uh, creating a demand for art and for for things. An example is Mustafa is a young uh, artist who does different graffiti by demand and people hiring him to do different work for restaurants, hotels, and stuff like that. Nijum has created like this kind of uh, by approach where people approach her and she creates this kind of workshops inside her home where people come and learn, younger people that reach her out for that. Uh, same thing with Hannah, uh, and there's many, many examples. This is the first people that came to my mind when I tried to uh, come up and gather a few uh, screenshots from the Somali artists, uh, local artists that is a country expressing themselves and creating demand and need and the education for the people to understand how it's important that people can the art expression and people how it's contemporary like express themselves through it. Sorry, I think I've been talking a lot. I took a longer time than expected. Thank you. Okay. Um that was it, Mustafa, just to double check. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Was that too short? I thought I finished the 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's good because we have space a little bit for uh, conversation and then um, we open up uh, for the last, I would say, um, 50 minutes maybe for conversation um, with whoever is here, um, uh, people who are following us, who joined us. So I wanted to talk to you, uh, Mustafa, I had a few questions. I wanted to touch base with you. Maybe, uh, yeah, this is great. I'll turn on my screen so there's one person <laughs> present. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk to you because you've, you know, we know each other for a bit longer. We've been together, working together, of course, um, in context of the Anarchy Citizenship Project with you and, um, Kinsey, uh, of course, um, uh, Nadine Stein, Rashid Ali, and then there are so many other people that will join in the upcoming years. Um, this photography project that also dives into textile um, um, archiving, uh, visual cu culture, but also to a visual aesthetics that I would like to talk to you about. Could you maybe touch a bit based on, you know, this digital language, this digital visual language that is also present in your work um, and somehow in uh, extension is also present in the public space of a city like Hargeisa. So, you know, the way people use typo typography, um, the, um, I would say, um, yeah, the way people use vernacular culture to actually create 
a visual language that is very unique for the place itself. It says a lot about um, Hargeisa or these other cities across the country. Could you maybe touch a bit on that, the visual language, um, the way you have come to it, uh, what you see around you, um, the usage of color, for example? I think as Somali people, we are, people are very in love with colors. We are very colorful people. You always feel very bright, uh, very like into your face, uh, kind of bright colors. Maybe that's where my um, uh, love for colors comes from. Uh, you always see women dressing up in these colorful things, tiny houses that have been painted outside with bright orange, bright blue, and different colors like that. Well, with time, with the internet culture and people having different, like this kid's smartphone, every corner people have access to the internet, it becomes that people are being more, um, can I say, um, inspired by the global movement of uh, taste, because taste becomes something very globalized where it's into your face, you open up Instagram, you go through exploring, you always see the same different things. So. Even though people are trying to have this, still have this kind of a very Somali identity, very very identified local taste, it still can be seen and felt that being um, inspired by what's happening outside of the country through TV, through internet, through the TV shows, through the adopt the adopt uh, Somali Turk like the Turkish show that been adopted in Somali, uh, how people look like dressing up and all of that globally. So Taste is always changing. It's always uh, putting an idea to the visual aesthetic. Like I could tell even the architecture is changing. Five years ago, I think this is what it used to be beautiful. Now it's changing the same thing for photography, the way people dress up, the art. Yeah, I think still we have this kind of a lo very localized understanding. So maybe it's not even written like. Uh, Maybe if you, if you approach someone here, might not be able to explain what kind of a taste is there, but it's there and it exists. Like you'll see all these people, younger people going out to these different educational ceremonies and people have to print all these different big posters and photos and stick it over all these cars. Like congratulations, someone will get married, someone will have an educational ceremony and they will cover up all the cars with stickers. Uh, whenever there's like an occasion, people will go and have, go to the closest printing center and print out these kind of colorful messages and wishing and they stick it up like into your face to <laughs> billboards and everywhere in the corner. So, like, there's a visual culture, visually uh, localized like cultural thing that exists there. Yeah, yeah thank you um, for this. And I was wondering if you could maybe also say something about um, what it meant for you to be um, self-trained you know, that, you know, you learned through kind of studying online, digital, I guess digital culture in that sense plays a big role in your work, but also in, in the way you have come to understand what your practice is. Um, and I was wondering, what do, you, what do you feel the most at the moment that also um, is, is the most urgently needed, you know, in, in for example, a city like Hargeisa, where there are a lot of people who are interested in participating, contributing, who are using this language, um, using, you know, kind of design or visual culture as a way to express them, their moments of joy or important life moments? Uh, I think I've been always, I feel, uh, as I said before, always exposed to art in a different way. And then I didn't know that that's art, that art can be found upon expression. Uh, it was hard for me to learn anything directly because there is no literature, anything that can be said as like a creative institute in the country. So the only like um, uh, an opportunity that I had was going to the internet and try to grasp any kind of information that I get. And with the social media, I was really I feel blessed that I've been I was I was able to approach people who have been very good. To share with me their knowledge, uh, give me links, give me free books, uh, uh, direct me to locations and places where I can try to learn from online. 
and send me like an online workshop. Uh, so I was able to go to different workshops physically to different places outside of the country. So it's still online was the main place where I was able to connect, learn, uh, have a connection with people and network, people that I can actually call uh, colleagues, friends, mentors. So internet was always like, uh, yeah, a life and education. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mustafa. I just wanted to kind of open up. So whoever would like to share a question or a comment, you can um, send a message or write it in the chat. Um, send me a personal message or write in the chat, and then I will ask the question or share the comment. Um, the other thing is that I really would love to bring back Kinsey and then maybe talk about a bit more about um, you know, this thing of what is needed for communities to, to thrive. Um, when we speak about um, Somali ecosystem structures for artistic practice. So this is something that I would love to like talk to both of you because I feel both of you have different perspectives on this. Um, I'll turn back my camera on. Um, yeah, and I'm wondering, Quinn, uh, uh, Kinsey, if you could maybe, you know, yeah. say something a bit also with your concerns at the moment of setting up a Somali uh, museum in East London, and then um, also uh, Mustafa, you said opened a space. Um, maybe you, yeah, you could touch also on that as well. So um, thank you, Amal, um, and thank you, Mustafa. That was really wonderful, beautiful to also look at the amazing work that you've done. Um, for us um, at the moment, I think, like I said, after 30 years of moving <laughs> between spaces and doing residencies and takeovers and exhibitions and traveling, you know, um, both in the UK, Europe and internationally, I think we've come to the realization that in order for us not to redo everything that we have been doing in, um, and, and coming from a place of erasure where there was nothing and very hard to find things, to find books, to find scholars, I think we've now um, collected all this material, both tangible and intangible, and the most urgent thing for us to, to have is the space. And so last year, um, during Ramadan, um, during lockdown, <laughs> we put a call out and did a crowdfunding. And it really was the most amazing thing as we've exceeded our expectation, our goal, and almost raised twice as what we asked for. Um, now we are back in this place. We've now um, been working with an amazing um, branding company um, headed um, A OK, -OK um, headed by a young Somali uh, creative, um, and we've kind of like designing our website. Um, we've assembled an amazing team. Um, we found a building. And now we have to raise over a million pounds or even more <laughs> to, to purchase this building and create this museum. Um, it feels kind of scary <laughs> um, as we are not museum uh, or heritage professionals. Um, we're artists, we're archivists, we have an amazing team of um, a legal team, um, architects, um, writers, um, some, um, some of the most amazing um, people um, on this side um, were, you know, of, of the world who are Somali and um, are supporting us. Um, but we need to make those links, both um, a, a, as in, in Shunambi uh, tradition, <laughs> to kind of mobilize and utilize our networks, both locally and internationally, to secure this building, to um, attract the expertise, the support um, and the funds to um, create a lasting impact and a legacy. So um, people don't have to struggle as much as we struggled to create a legacy and to preserve our culture and to create a space for us to come together. I think it's very important that 
um, where we've cultivated the goodwill, the connections that that mustn't be lost again. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very important um, also in this cultivation of space and, you know, to keep actually um, um, the resources also um, visible, present in the community. I meant also, you know, the artistic uh, resource, resources, also the knowledge that often evaporates, you know, when people move on or burn out um, or pass on. Um, and at the same time, I'm also curious um, how, because so many of us, it's the Somali art, I would say, um, community globally is fragmented, but at the same time also quite connected. Mm -hmm. So I just was wondering, um, 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 Mustafa, what that also means for you, you know, what are you currently considering? Um, I know many of us have conversations. Um, there's always this intense desire to, um, um, contribute to facilitating whatever is needed um, in the country, or I should say countries. Um, and yeah, I just was wondering what, where, what you currently are working on, what you're thinking about. Well, it's always been like a dream for me to be a creative space where people um, can come and uh, be inspired by others, have a a workshop where people can express and showcase their own creation and artwork, have features, people who can mentor them, people who have been in this field for a long time, can inspire them and see them. Uh, I mean, just to be able to see something very creative coming uh, out of any kind of a creative platform and flourish the city and make it more understanding what art is and give the younger generation like a place where can, they can come and express themselves and uh, gather and have different programs. I mean, I had a, a, a hustle for me to save the lunch money, go to the internet, just to be able to see what the other people are doing online, other places, but to have a space now where people can come in and do different stuff is very interesting. And I love how a lot of like Somali diaspora and lot, like different artists, Somalis around the world have been connecting now. I've seen people trying to create this kind of different rooms through clubhouse and different places. So they're trying to have um, this ongoing discussion of what is to be a Somali artist that belongs to different country, but it still uh, as an identity have that kind of a uh, creative uh, expression that they can express themselves through it. So it's very interesting. And I hope I'll be able to have that with uh, my other colleagues and with you and anybody who wants to like be involved and make it something big that people can be inspired by and they can like, contribute to and engage with too. Sounds uh, really good, uh, Mustafa. I think it's also a good moment to kind of open up. Um, I, uh, we have also the possibility that you can speak in your microphone in case you want to say something or contribute or make a comment. Um, we're heading into the last bits of time. Um, so if there are any comments, this is, this is your moment. Um, so Kinsey and uh, Mustafa, I was just wondering also to kind of round up while we also remain open to, to whoever wants to share something. Um, yeah, I, I really also, Mustafa, you touched base on this. This is what I wanted to round up with. Um, you were talking about Somali futurism, this kind of, you know, maybe alternative world making that people have um, um, are, are now nurturing for themselves. And I was wondering how is that, is that a conversation that you feel is always diasporic? What do you see? Um, what do we have to think about? Because, you know, the immediately first things that one thinks about is, is um, uh, you know, Afrofuturism, then there is Af the indigenous futurism, there's the Gulf, Gulf futurism. So there is multiple, um, um, a multiplicity of futurism possible. So I'm wondering what you have been seeing and that some of us should maybe check out as well. Um, at the moment, there is no, uh, 
So it, was this for me or for Kinsey? Sorry. It's for you. Yeah. yeah. So th there's a few other people like um, following up. They love what they were doing. Uh, they were trying to express themselves in a way that, uh, in a way, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not, I don't think we can say there is a Somali like uh, past art, like everything that is being done now, me, I'm doing, everybody's doing, it's some kind of like Somali futurism and Afrofuturism art because everything that we're doing might not be in, like connected to something older that has been existed or made before. So everything that we're trying to create um, mostly like futuristic in the sense of we're trying to create something that will be being made now or we're thinking of like, to create like a, uh, you, you know uh, what I mean, sorry. Yeah, 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 I, uh, I get so, so in a way I'm here, I'm also bringing in uh, Kinsey to kind of round it up. I'm wondering, um, so it's not like a, a rereading of the Alindi, like, you know, for those who, who are listening, it's not the rereading of the Somali materiality, uh, the material, the, the fabric, but it's something completely else, like a different visual language. Yes. Is yeah, that what yeah. you're, it, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're trying to move on. They're trying to no, well, add that's that new element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's so good. We're yeah. very lucky. Oh, we unmute ourselves. Sorry. Yeah. I think someone else came in. Um, Idil Hassan. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I know, but but just think... bring in Kinsey. Idil, if you want to say something, you can you know write to us or just unmute you. But I was wondering, Kinsey, for the future of the Somali Museum, is this something for an exhibition or something for like a research group? So, so basically, we're we're trying to secure um, a building, um, but definitely um, the first thing um, would be this October we're going to be launching our website uh, and, and our campaign, and and hopefully um, we will then be able to secure the so yeah so a series of exhibitions, site specific installations. And um, to start with, we're going to be a collectionless museum. So a lot of it is going to be, yeah, definitely exhibitions. But and also refurbishing the building, where we're, we're, we're assuming is going to take um, at least uh, a year or two um, for us to be up and running as a museum. Um, so, but in the meantime, um, the first, really, the first, the big job that we have is to secure um, the building. And um, at the moment, we're kind of in, con in communication with the owners of the building. Um, yeah. So that's basically where we are at. And then as soon yeah. as we secure the building, um, we're going to start having exhibitions in there, the making of the Somali Museum. Yeah, so, so then there is... <laughs> that's that's, yes. that's yes. our yes. little dua, uh, vibration yeah. to the universe. Um, so you will be, I mean, and if you want, if anybody wants to support, reach out to us, they can reach us at nimby.org. Um, uh, also, they can join our campaign on the Somali Museum website. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both um, so much. Um, it's been truly a pleasure also to kick off the series with um, kind of a homecoming um, a digital homecoming, I would say. Thank you both for really touching on, you know, what it means to have um, um, a personal, you know, like your own practice, the histories, the material culture, the work that must be done that we haven't gotten to, um, the, I guess, the horizon, which is, in the case of Mustafa, um, Somali um, futurism. I look forward to following up to maybe even writing about it would be wonderful. Um, and for Kinsey, um, Numbi, um, the Somali Museum in London, um, which I will definitely, you know, be in close proximity to. Definitely. Um, We're hoping to collaborate with you and possibly do an exhibition. And Yes, um, oh, of course. Um, um, you're always invited. Thank you so much. Um, and other than that, 
the next the series will continue in a month's time. Um, there's two more stops to make, although they're gigantic countries, uh, Ethiopia and Sudan, as I said at the uh, be uh, beginning of this conversation, um, you know, we're scratching the surface and starting a conversation, or I would say maybe uh, entering from a different point, um, entrance point. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, uh, Kinsi Abdullah and Mustafa Said, and also the uh, colleagues of at uh, Mashaf, and specifically uh, those who've been, you know, very much instrumental in facilitating this conversation, the IT team. And um, this will be a video, so it will be available online. And until hopefully until the next must have talk. Thank you all and have Thank a wonderful you. day. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.